Hey friends, this is Aronica Cole and I am here on behalf of Growing Healthy Babies and I'm excited today to share with you one of the things that I've become passionate about this year and that is mindfulness but more specifically mindful parenting. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so very briefly for this mindful parenting session, we'll be talking about what mindfulness is, what mindfulness looks like day to day, mindful parenting, the mindful parenting principles, and how to practice mindful parenting. So what is mindfulness? Dictionary.com gives us some super official term and definition as far as what mindfulness is, but that's not what we're gonna focus on. What we're gonna focus on is what mindfulness means in everyday terms, which is essentially just being present throughout your day-to-day -day moments, meaning that you're able to live in the moment and not be using that time to think about things that you could, should, would be doing, and like pre-planning for the future. You're literally in the moment. So if you're brushing your teeth, you're paying attention to the foam in your mouth. If you're waking up, you know, you're noticing your body, not thinking about the day in front of you. So that's essentially what mindfulness is, just in basic terminology. So let's talk about mindfulness in day to day. Mindful practice doesn't mean that you actually have to buy anything, you don't have to listen to certain music. It's not as in anything as complicated as that. There are things that you can do in the morning, things that you can be doing while you're eating, while you're walking, and of course, parenting. So in the morning, what does that look like, right? What that looks like is when you wake up and the first thing that you do it might normally be to jump up, brush your teeth, get your day started. But having mindful moments in the morning looks like paying attention to what your body feels like as you wake up. Are you tired? Did you get enough rest? Is your body a little sore? Paying attention to those things and using that time to set intentions for your day versus just jumping up and getting started. Mindful eating is actually something that's become increasingly popular as well. And so what that is, is it's just paying attention to your body as you're eating. Are you full? Are you still hungry? Are there, is there something that you're craving? Listening to what your body needs as you're eating is something that's so important to do because it teaches us so much about foods and our body and how it reacts to these things. Something as simple as taking a walk is also a moment that you can be more mindful. Paying attention to what's around you. Is it sunny? How's the temperature feel? How does your body feel as you're walking? Are there parts of your body that are a little bit more sore than others as you're taking a walk? Do you need to stretch some? It's a great moment to pay attention to what's going on with your body. And then, of course, parenting. So mindfulness and parenting isn't as simple as paying attention to what it is that you're going through in the moment. But it's also taking a moment to pause and listen to your children and see what's going on with them. But let's talk more detail about parenting and mindfulness. So what is mindful parenting? Mindful parenting is having more intention and being fully aware when you're interacting with your kids. When you do this, it enables you to be fully present with them and you're able to pay attention to what they're doing. You can respond to them with more intention versus just reacting. It also allows you to be more present and aware about what's going on with them. One of my favorite things to do now that I'm practicing more mindful parenting with my three children is in playing with my son. My two-year-old will come over and he will bring me toys that he wants to play with. And we he loves PJ Masks as well as Paw Patrol. And my favorite thing to do is playing with him and listening to him adopt the little voices of the different characters that he's heard speak in the shows. Before mindful parenting, that's not exactly something I would have noticed because I might have brushed him off or haphazardly played with him not being fully present in the moment. The beauty about mindful parenting is that there are no limits to when it is that you're being mindful. Um, you can be mindful when you know you notice that your child is maybe a little bit more cranky. There might be some triggers that you've now noticed that are triggering their crankiness. You can be more mindful in these situations um, where you notice them being happier 
one of the things that I noticed about my oldest is <clears throat> in learning her her love language. She responds more favorably to everything after she's had just quality time with either my husband or I. And because of that, we're able to note when she's a little off, she might just need a hug. She might need some more quality time where it's just she and I or my husband and her. So that way she's able to kind of reset and we're able to help her recalibrate as well. The same thing with my other kids. I have a middle child and of course there's classic middle, middle children uh, behaviors, but we're able to kind of nip that in the bud because we're able to see and be more mindful and see when it is that her mood shifts or when she needs more attention. Um, and with mindful parenting, we're able to be more proactive with handling some of the behavior issues that might arise versus being reactive to it. And in doing that, it makes more positive interactions with our kids versus negative. And I won't lie, this can be really difficult and it does take practice, especially when you have multiple children in different developmental phases. Practicing is not something that is an all or nothing type of thing. I know sometimes for me, I can feel really bad if I haven't fully committed or if every single day I'm not mindful with my kids and I'm like, oh, it's a wash. But mindful parenting is not that way. It's being intentional. And sometimes it's easy for us to be intentional, intentional with our kids. And sometimes it's not. And that's okay. As with anything, there are key principles for mindful parenting. There are three of them in particular. The first one is, notice your feelings when you're in a conflict with your child. And I feel like a lot of times in parenting, we're expected to be perfect and like have no feelings and just, you know, totally make pretend that everything with us is fine, but it's not. Sometimes when they're going through a conflict, it causes conflict within us. And it's important for us to stop and realize what, what points of feelings of conflict are our own versus the ones that we have with our children. Once you're able to separate it, it's way easier to just kind of deal with your children's conflict versus dealing with your conflict in addition to your children's conflict. The second thing to do is learn to pause before responding in anger. Sometimes this is easy, depending upon how we're able to either separate that conflict, where we are emotionally, mentally, etc. And sometimes it's, it's, it's easy. Um, but either way, practicing pausing before responding, um, it teaches us to be more mindful about what our own reactions are and so that we're able to respond with more intention. The third is being able to listen to what your child's views are without listening with the intent to respond, whether you agree or not. I know that we teach our kids to listen for uh, to us and listen to what we're saying without listening to give us a response. This is something that we teach in our home because oftentimes we say things and you can see it on their little faces that they're listening and they've already got a response together. Just like we teach them that they can't have that response or listen for only the sake of responding, we have to do the same thing for them. Okay, so now I want to just pause for a moment here and have you all reflect on which of these principles is hardest for you. Some of them are going to be easy, some of them are going to be harder, and some of them are harder depending upon what else is going on with you but really focus on which you think is going to be the hardest for you. So let's do that now. Okay, so hopefully you've taken a second to think about which one is kind of difficult for you or which you foresee being most difficult. The reason why I wanted you to stop and to kind of think about which one you could see as being more difficult is because the more prepared we are with facing uh, potential conflict and difficulties, the better prepared we are.
Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the three key principles of mindfulness and parenting and you've identified which ones could be a challenge, I do want to share that I have a challenge with the third one. And here's the reason why. For so long, we've essentially been taught that children are, you know, meant to be seen, not heard, that children's ideas are just that ideas. And in essence, they shouldn't be respected, but the opposite is truth. We are not raising children to be children. We're raising children to be adults. And in order for them to get a firm grasp of their emotions, their feelings, we have to be the ones to teach them how to take those things seriously. And if we're constantly dismissing them, then they learn to dismiss that as well. But it's hard because while we're processing their emotions, we're also processing our own emotions at the same time. And that can be a little bit of a challenge. But honoring their feelings as they're going through something is the best way to teach them how to pay attention to their feelings as well as how to move through them. So doing that and setting that example for them is really, really important, even if it's hard for us to do. So now we've talked about what mindfulness is, how to have different mindful moments within day-to-day -day living, We've talked about what mindful parenting is. We've talked about the principles of mindful parenting, as well as identified which ones could be potentially tough for us. So now let's talk about how we can practice mindful parenting. One of the things that I love to tell my daughter is, what you practice is how you perform. And without practice, sometimes we don't show up as well as we would like to. So one of my favorite things to do is called the STOP method. This is something that I learned from the popular meditation app called Headspace. And when in a tough interaction with your child or even other people, just period, it's best to stop what you're doing. So whether you're cooking and something happens, you guys are playing, something happens, you're taking a walk, something happens, stop what you're doing. Pause, take a couple of minutes to just really take in what's going on before you have a reaction. During that pause, take a few deep breaths. When you're taking your deep breaths, do some cleanse, some cleansing breathing, which is breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth, and allow your muscles to really soften and relax. This is really important because how we react physiologically also really affects how we verbally react, how we emotionally react. So taking that moment to really get yourself together physically is big. Take a moment to observe and notice and pay attention with openness to your thoughts, your sensations and emotions. Really kind of figure out what's going on with you. Are you annoyed because you were interrupted? Are you angry because of the interruption? Are you okay with the interruption? No matter what it is, go ahead and just go through and acknowledge those emotions, those feelings, those sensations, and then proceed. Go back to what you were doing with your child and respond to them with a clearer and calmer mental state. And I want to reiterate that it's not easy to do, especially if this is something that's new for you. But infusing your, your parenting style with mindfulness is always worth it because it allows you to give both yourself and your children the grace that you need in order to be a human with flaws. Some additional resources that I love, I mentioned the Headspace app, which is really great because it allows you to um, kind of customize what it is that you're looking for. The Calm app, which I think is probably the most popular, where you can actually choose meditation based upon what it is that you need. And I love Hue 2. This is such a cool app. It'll play some really calm, soothing music. I like this because it's really hard for me to meditate. Um, or to uh, clear my mind. And in essence with this, you're like moving these blocks around and creating almost like ombre hues. But while you're doing it, it's playing calming music and you're able to kind of focus and calm down. Um, and I love to do that because I'm the type of person who needs to be doing something in order to calm myself down. So we just went over what mindfulness is, how to practice mindful moments in day-to-day -day living. 
we went over what mindful parenting is, the principles of mindful parenting, and how to put those principles into practice. I hope that this was a topic that was really helpful to you and you gained some knowledge that you can apply in your day-to-day -day lives by yourself as well as with your children. This has been Aronica Cole for Growing Healthy Babies, and you have a great day.